A large and very persistent anticyclone has been sitting over Iceland and the Norwegian Sea for several days, and that's really just been a continuation of a predominantly blocked weather regime across northern Europe throughout this spring, but things have begun to change. As most of you already know, the persistence of high pressure in northern Europe has led to much drier and at times warmer than average weather, causing the development of drought conditions and a heightened risk of wildfires in many locations. The Nordic countries, France, the Benelux, and portions of Central Europe continue to be the most affected areas as this soil moisture graphic shows. On the other hand, portions of the Iberian Peninsula, North Africa, Italy, and even Eastern Europe have seen wet and stormy conditions. Thankfully, I can start this forecast with good news. Taking a look at the current satellite and radar imagery, you can see an area of low pressure spreading much needed rainfall and even some high elevation snow to the Scandinavian Peninsula. The associated cold front is draped from Iberia and all the way through the Balkan Peninsula and the Baltic states. Lots of rain and storms can be expected across that corridor, and this will repeat itself again tomorrow. The center of low pressure will also not really move, so further spells of rain can be expected in northern Germany and across Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. Look out for strong to potentially severe storms and even a squall line from the Baltic states down through Belarus and Ukraine, turning more into widespread clustering storm activity across the Balkans and also all the way over into southeastern Spain. Now looking at Ireland and the UK, a cutoff low brought some isolated shower and storm activity over the last few days, offering some pockets of drought relief, but really other than that, the pattern has remained mostly dry. This will change as early as Friday. It's been a really long time since I got to say this, but the pest from the west is going to be making a comeback initially in the form of a large band of rainfall, and then on Saturday morning a much more potent wave of rain and wind will arrive before crossing into mainland Europe and bringing much needed rain to France, the Benelux, Germany, and Scandinavia. A brief lull in the action then sets in after those first couple waves of widespread precipitation, but scattered rain showers continue into next week before more depressions arrive from the Atlantic. Here's the rainfall forecast between Friday and next Monday. Ireland and Scotland will receive the heaviest and most persistent rainfall, with areas further south and east getting less overall. Iceland and Scandinavia will also get a decent amount of precipitation during this time frame, maximizing along coastal and mountainous areas. And now for the wide view, that stripe of yellow probably caught your eye immediately. We're going to talk about the reason behind that in just a moment, but I did want to point out that much of Iberia, southern France, and even Italy are showing signs of drying out except for some scattered storms storm activity, so I think it's safe to say that we're finally breaking out of that weather pattern that we've seen throughout much of the springtime. Okay, so let's talk about all that rain in Eastern Europe. Remember that cold front I talked about in the beginning of the video? Between today and tomorrow, it's not going to move much, but look at what happens when it does appear to keep moving eastward. It simply stops. That right there is because of high pressure which builds up over a massive area of western Russia over the next couple of days. It's not really a big deal at first, but as you can see it doesn't budge even during the weekend, so we basically end up with several waves of intense rainfall and storms over the same areas day after day. Even by next week that area of high pressure may actually get stronger and grow in size. And remember that the pest from the west is going to be back to driving wave after wave of low pressure into Europe, and when the leftovers reach eastern Europe they just hit a wall and continue to cause issues with intense storm activity and repeated rounds of rain. Going back to the rainfall accumulation map, that's quite a bit of precipitation just within Friday and Monday. Now look at this forecast through the end of May. It only adds up, particularly in the Balkans, so please consider this an early alert about a heightened risk of flash flooding as we go through the rest of this month, not to mention the growing risk of severe weather. Unfortunately, when it does come to weather patterns, it's always a trade-off. We need beneficial rain in the north to help with drought conditions, but that also means we say goodbye to blue sky, and to avoid persistent flood concerns in the Iberian Peninsula, we face intense heat and the possibility of wildfires. Speaking of intense heat, that's one last thing I wanted to focus on in this video. Over the next few days, parts of Spain in particular are going to be a little cooler than average. That's because of a cold front passing through, but look at what happens by the beginning of next week. Western and southern areas really start to warm up quickly with deep orange and even brown shades showing up. This indicates temperatures 10 to 15 degrees Celsius above the average. Some weather models also suggest a multi-day thunderstorm outbreak as this heat builds up across the peninsula, so we're going to have to watch trends closely in the coming days. Our first featured photo today comes from the Antwerp region of Belgium from May 12, 2025. These interesting cloud formations were spotted in Croatia yesterday during stormy conditions across the region, and also from yesterday this distant storm was spotted in Prague, Czechia. 
If you'd like to have your weather-related picture featured in a video, consider joining my Discord server linked below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.